the unseen folks affected by the pandemic. This uh, is actually referring to an article that my good friend Eleanor Goldfield wrote for Mint Press News. Um, very, very good article. I'm going to talk about a few things that she addressed in there. Uh, not all of them. Uh, just a few things. I encourage you to go and uh, read the article. Let me uh, try to post the link up um, to the article itself uh, because it's an excellent, excellent article. She's she's a great journalist. Uh, she has a show called Act Out that she that she uh, was doing regularly, um, and uh, and she, it's sort of still going. It's as it's it's been going as an audio podcast now. Uh, because she's writing for Mint Press News a lot more. So, um, yeah, I highly encourage you guys to read this article because it's fantastic. It's very well written. But a couple of things that she addresses in there are, uh, uh, you know, who are the who are the unseen people that are affected by this pandemic? Um, not just on a uh, epidemiological level, if that's a word, uh, or I might have just made up a word, uh, but also on a financial level, um, the economic level because we are seeing a lot of people that are facing economic stress throughout all this. And there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, different identities of people that I don't think we consider on a daily basis of how this pandemic is really affecting them and how the failures of capitalism to handle this pandemic is really affecting these people. So um, the first, the first, uh, group of people that she talks about is um, the undocumented folks. There are 10.5 million undocumented workers. Um, and right now, these workers are considered essential. They're considered essential workers, right? Uh, because they have to go out there and do the manual labor, uh, keep the agriculture industry going. And, um, the, and the one thing, too, is that people kind of don't realize is like these undocumented workers, they pay taxes, they contribute to this country on a social level, on a cultural level, on a political level. Right. I mean, we, we see we see uh, the culture of a lot of undocumented people everywhere, you know, like like if they're coming from Mexico then we definitely have a surplus of fucking Tex-Mex food everywhere. We definitely have a surplus of Mexican restaurants everywhere, right? So it's like these cultures do permeate our society. They are in America. They are a part of America. So automatically sitting there and claiming, well, fuck these people and they don't deserve to be here because they didn't come here through the right bureaucratic channels that would have probably kept them out of this country in the first place. Then, if that's the case, then you know I think you're 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 not understanding the full scope of um, one what caused these people to come here, which is probably uh, has something to do with American imperialism because America likes to fuck with other countries, and there has been a long history of America constantly fucking with other countries, um, running CIA coups and so on and so forth, um, and uh, two like what they have actually brought into this country. And what their, uh, you know, quote unquote, net worth is, in in terms of the culture that they brought into this country and, and how they've shaped this country, um, you know. So, so they are they are they are the essential workers. They've become the essential workers uh, of America. So um, they are they can't even get that twelve hundred dollar pittance that the uh, Democrats and Republicans so graciously signed into, uh, I I I into law for us. During a global pandemic, when a bunch of people lose their jobs and a, a majority of their income or all of their income, here, here's $1,200 for you to ride this whole thing out. Well, they're not even eligible for that sort of stuff. So... Um, you know, I, I've talked about my thing with with that twelve hundred uh, twelve hundred bucks. It's a stopgap measure at best. That's really all it is, uh, and I think they're realizing that it's a stopgap measure. You know, um, but they can't even uh, access unemployment. The undocumented, um, because of their status, because of their immigration status, um, they can't get unemployment, which sucks. 
because that's what five six hundred bucks every week or so every two weeks or so um, i'm not exactly sure what the time frame for getting that is uh, but you know they can't do that because if they do they risk having to deal with um ice or some other immigrant immigration system so what are their options their choice is they apply for the unemployment and take a risk of dealing with ICE and then getting sent to an, a detention center, which is which is going to be awful because fuck all if we treat our prisons properly, our detention centers properly or with care, keep it clean. We don't do that. Um, or they go to work as an essential worker, getting not even really hazard pay. Um, in a lot of these situations, they're not even really getting hazard pay. They're still getting paid under the table and less than minimum wage. In both instances, they have a higher uh, likelihood of being exposed uh, to the virus and getting, uh, getting this disease. So they're kind of in between a rock and a hard place. It's like, what do you do? You know, and there is no real plan of um, of how to deal with this situation. Nobody really has a plan of like, what do we do to address the undocumented population uh, that's in America? How do how do we how do we go forward with this? Uh, because they don't care. That's that's sort of the reality of it. The reality of it is uh, those in power just don't give a shit. The Republicans definitely don't give a shit. The Republicans don't care about anything that has to do with immigration. And the Democrats fold over so quickly to that that they don't really care. There's no money in immigration reform. So why would they why would they need to do it? There there's there's money in ICE, there's money in these detention centers because then they can just turn these immigrant detention centers into you know prisons for profit like they do with regular prisons anyway. So there's so why would they even what the fuck why would we care? So you know the 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 undocumented um, these folks are in in trouble, and uh, and there doesn't really seem to be any sort of network or uh, provision to be put into place to help these folks out. Um, another thing that I mean this has been going around really I I've I've seen more information about this on like my Facebook feed than I have um, in like any sort of like corporate or mainstream media. I've barely seen anything in, in corporate or mainstream media is about domestic violence. Uh, 20 large metro cities saw double digit jumps of calls regarding domestic violence in April. Double digit jump. To me, I mean, I, I have a solution. I don't know if it's, if it's the solution, but I think it's something that we can take a look at is, I mentioned this in regards to, to tr figuring out what we can do with uh, like releasing prisoners, but this, this might be a more palatable option is, um, you know, shelters are becoming uh, overloaded because of this, because there has been a, a uh, high jump in domestic violence cases, and nobody should be in that environment. If 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 you're in an abusive situation, you know uh, that that one it fucking super sucks, and two nobody should be put in that situation. Um, nobody should be uh, should be physically or emotionally or mentally abused in in that way. That's that's just a shitty thing to do to your fellow human being, especially a fellow human being that you claim to love unequivocally. Like doing that to somebody is just like it's just like the height and height height of of shittiness, right? Um it sucks. And I think because we're seeing these numbers go up, what what you could do because these shelters are also starting to get overloaded, what you could do is um you could convert some of the unused hotels into additional shelter spaces. Uh, I mentioned that for prisoners, 
and there were a few people that regularly watched uh, that were just like, well, I don't know if that's the best idea. I think it's, it's, it's cool that your head went there, but I don't know if that's the best idea. Um, but it, but it might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit more sensible to use the unused hotels for as, as sort of domestic beef shelters, uh, you know, and part of it too is you could risk, you could do a little bit of a reformation on the criminal justice system as well, uh, where you could have cops like, I don't know, um, uh, post up as guards for these domestic abuse victims instead of being abusers themselves, right? Instead of accosting minorities who can't afford to wear a mask and dragging them off of buses, maybe you could actually do something, I don't know, positive. Maybe maybe, maybe you could do that whole protect and serve thing that your badge says. By protecting victims of domestic abuse while they're being sheltered in, a, in an unused hotel during a pandemic. Just spitballing some ideas out here, people. You know, I'm I'm not running for office. I can't run for office. I don't got no money uh, to, to to do that. But just just trying to spitball an idea out there. Uh, but you know, the, the the what it really comes down to is: Will these large corporate hotels? Um, will they do something like that? If that idea even gets proposed, will they do something like that? And I, and you know, it would be, it, I, I would probably see a lot of resistance to this idea from any sort of corporate hotel chain, right? Like the fucking Hilton, like who's using the fucking Hilton right now or a holiday Inn, right? Like, or, or whatever name, name a hotel, the, the Bayview Inn and suites. Uh, that's a hotel chain I've stayed at before fucking red roof inns. You know, like they're not, they're, no, who's using that right now, right? Like we're all kind of in these stay at home orders, or some of the stay at home orders are shifting to like yellow alerts or whatever the fuck color system uh, that the government likes likes to do, you know, to use. Is these, but these corporate hotels, they're like, they're not going to, they're, they're just like, well, where's the money? Where, where's the money? And it's like, oh, but don't you think that it would feel good to just like help people? Yeah, I help people when there's money involved. You know, and if that's the case, right, if they're if 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 they, the Hilton chain is concerned about money, why don't you just ask your pimps in the government to fund you? They didn't they didn't hesitate to bail out corporations in the very beginning of all this. Maybe you could open up your doors to help domestic shelters and then and then go to your pimps and be like, look, we're helping money, please. Speaking of our uh, next topic of people that are uh, unseen folks that are affected by this are sex workers uh, who are primarily single mothers and they are excluded from the bailout bill because America has a moral compass. You guys, did you guys know that? Are you aware of that? This is news to me. America has a moral compass. Boy, it must be buried in some fucking back shelf of a back shelf. Somewhere deep in a bunker in central Montana, that moral compass. You know, we don't see it very often. <laughs> and all of a sudden they're like, ah, sex workers. We can't we can't include them with a bailout. They're primarily single mothers, but you know, we can't include morality. I got Jesus. You know, Jesus is somewhere. He's around. He's probably he's probably around. Well, guess what? Jesus slept with a sex worker. All right. Yeah. I bet Jesus would be like, hey, include him in the fucking bailout bill. <laughs> My girlfriend was a sex worker, so maybe quit being a bunch of piece of shit. <laughs> you know, but they did. They excluded them because of the purient sexual nature of the work. Well, uh, that is that is the uh, um, that is the 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 quote that they've used. But it's okay. But guys, relax. Uh, we did spend one point three two million dollars on fighter jets to fly over uh, various different cities in order to thank, in order to thank uh, our healthcare workers. Uh, as Eleanor Goldfield points out in that article that I shared, uh, sex sells, but war pays. 
right? And who doesn't, come on, and that is a very accurate statement because who doesn't like uh, an ad with the, with the very scantily clad, bosomy woman uh, riding a bomb? Right now, that makes you want to buy that bomb. You got to buy that bomb. Your boner wants you to buy that bomb, you guys. Okay, you got to blow some people up. And how much of the how much of that bomb sales go to pay uh, the woman? Nothing, because she is a dirty, dirty whore. Okay, and this is a Christian nation. All right, and and we gotta we gotta hold on to the sanctity of life. Emphasis on the titty and sanctity. Am I right, huh, fellas? Where are my fellas at, huh? Look, America is a country that cherishes life. So we have to make weapons to regulate that life. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. And how can we regulate life if we don't have explosives? Duh, guys, this is American War Economies 101. This is like the basics of what they teach you when you join the Pentagon. This is like orientation at the Pentagon, you guys. <laughs> But this is a result of like what a war economy actually does, right? Like you have you have a whole group of people that could use your help and you're like, what if we spent most of our money on something that virtually does nothing for anybody? What if what if we did that? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like this is this is an economy run on war, hubris, and like imperialistic destruction. That's essentially all that's all that's run on. It's just like there's an economy run of like uh, nationalistic pride and displays of unwarranted power. And re instead of spending your money on like actual, actual shit that people need, that actual people, things that people need. $1.32 million. $1.32 million could have gotten 66 ventilators going at $20,000 a piece. You could have used 1.3, uh, you could have gotten 1.32 million N95 masks at a dollar a piece uh, or 1100 $1,200 checks, and I bet you 1,100 sex workers or 1,100 undocumented immigrants um, and uh, 1,100 uh, single moms could have fucking used that 1,200 bucks. I still see people that haven't received their checks, that haven't gotten a direct deposit in their, in their accounts. Instead, you literally spend it on the most pointless fucking thing you could do which is uh, which is fighter jets to thank medical professionals. What an insane sentence I've been forced to say. <laughs> it's just the it's just like that. Who did that help? <laughs> who did that help? But you have to justify this, right? You have to justify this war economy. You have to justify the increase of the war budget that that we have to see. Oh, you can't just let it go. You got to we got to we got to justify this shit. So you got to do anything to utilize the military. We literally there's the whole world is causing calling for ceasefires and America is like, "But we have bombs we have to explode." We made all of these bombs. We can't just not explode them. That's rude to the bombs. These, the, the bosomy lady, do you remember? Because that's she wanted you to explode the bombs. <laughs> Instead of like reallocating this enormous, ridiculous military budget. Instead of reallocating it to things we actually need, like food or water or health or shelter. We, we do these pointless displays. <laughs> Do these insane, pointless displays. That that's what we should be. That's as a government. That's what they should do. They should be spending their money on food, water, health, and shelter. That's that's where the that's where the finances should be allocated to. This is not all depressing. That the next segment is going to show you guys like what uh, what we're all doing and and how we can all help each other. So uh, comments. Let's let's look at some of the comments. Hello. Hello, Swatala. Good to see you. Uh, have you ever stayed at a Red Roof Inn? All the hotels and motels I've stayed, they stayed at never a Red Roof Inn. I like Red Roof Inns. <laughs> there is a particular charm in how shitty Red Roof Inns are. Uh, in one of my albums, I, I reference a Red Roof Inn, particularly because I enjoy staying in them. Uh, I get weirded out at nice hotels. You know, like if, if a hotel is too ritzy, I'm just nervous that I'm going to break some shit. And I get scared about that. So, like, I like, I like staying in a red roof inn. 
it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm not arguing for the Republicans with this next comment. At least the Republicans are upfront about their stance on illegal immigration. Piss me off that the Democrats say they're for uh, immigration, but mostly in words. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. I do. I disagree with what the Republicans have to say, but I do appreciate their honesty in being like, yeah, we don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, like they just come out and they're like, we're not going to do anything. In fact, if you try to do something, we'll take one of our red states and try to sue the president, which is what they did uh, under the Obama administration when he came out and said he was for amnesty. Um, and people forget this is that Obama had the largest amount of deportations of any president in the last two decades, uh, which is crazy. And in 2009, under Obama is when we created ICE which we did not need. And if you talk to like, there, there have been interviews done with uh, border patrol agents that kind of look at ICE and they're just like, why is this a thing? Like, this is like, I don't understand why this is a thing. Like, they're so confused about the the reason why ICE exists. Other uh, other than to me, it, it just looks like they're trying to use immigration to uh, turn it into like the prison industrial complex. They're trying to be like, well, we haven't made money out of uh, off of you know persecuting undocumented immigrants. What if we did that? Like that's kind of what it feels like. But I mean, Obama came up with 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 the notion of of amnesty and then never fucking did anything about it. And there was a case where Texas, like I think the governor of Texas or something, was like, we're gonna sue Obama. <laughs> Everybody's like, what are you talking about? He's like, they're he's trying to get illegals into this country that's what he's trying to do and it's like that's not what the bill says at all but that's the thing is like they come out and they're just like yeah we're we're gonna be ignorant to immigrants like that's kind of what republicans do i mean brian kemp i think had the most honest uh like it was honest to how insane it was which goes to show who brian kemp might be as a human being uh where he he said that he wanted to uh, go around the state of Georgia, pick up a bunch of illegal immigrants, throw them in the back of his truck, and then drive down to the border at, in Texas and release them into the wild. Like, that's just a, that's just a policy this guy had. And he was just like, yep, this is what I plan on doing. <laughs> there were a bunch of people that were like, yeah, it sounds like a good plan. That sounds like a good, good play. Oh, it's crazy. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this clip. If you enjoyed this clip, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. You hit the like button. Make sure that you share this content out. Usually content like this, this anti-establishment comedy content is not uh, shown to as many people uh, as it possibly could be. It does get suppressed quite often. So uh, if you can hit that share button, get the word out there uh, and tell folks that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to be a part of a live virtual comedy show, the next live virtual comedy show, the next Citizen Revolution comedy show is going to be on May 22nd. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. And then they'll be, um, they'll be happening every Friday uh, at 9 p.m. So tickets are available for these shows at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N.com. And you got to get your tickets uh, because that's how I'm going to be able to send you the Zoom login information so you can attend the show and we don't get any unwanted visitors in the Zoom show. So like I said, the next one is on May 22nd. Grab your tickets and we'll see you there. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.